Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Newell and I'm one of the field application scientists here at PacBio. Today I will be describing the three workflows that we have for whole genome sequencing and I will share a few case studies associated with each workflow and hopefully by the end you will be able to determine which workflow is the right choice for your project. As I just mentioned, there are three workflows available for your projects. We have standard HiFi, low DNA input, and ultra low DNA input protocols. Where possible, the standard HiFi workflow run on the SQL2 system gives you the highest quality results for both genome assembly and human variant detection projects. For this protocol, we recommend at least three micrograms of high molecular weight genomic DNA per one gigabase of genome. However, if you are sample limited, the low and ultra low DNA input workflows will still provide excellent results. The low DNA input workflow requires 300 nanograms for each genome if you are multiplexing two samples with a 600 megabase genome size limit for each sample. For a single low DNA input sample, 400 nanograms of input DNA is required and there is a one gigabase genome size limit. Finally, our ultra low DNA input workflow requires as little as five nanograms of input DNA. But this workflow is amplification based and has a genome size limit of 500 megabases. So now I'm going to go through in a bit more detail each of the workflows and highlight some case studies for each. As I mentioned earlier, the standard HiFi workflow requires greater than three micrograms of genomic DNA per one gigabase of genome size. This workflow also requires that the DNA is greater than 40 kilobases, which is then sheared up to 25 kilobases. For Smart Bell library construction, you will follow the procedure and checklist for prepare, preparing HiFi the Smart Bell libraries using the Express Template Prep Kit 2.0. For variant detection, size selection is performed on the Sage ELF system. And for de novo assembly, size selection is performed on the Blue Pippin. For data analysis of variant detection, you can use Google Deep Variant, and for de novo assembly, you can use the Improved Phase Assembler, or IPA, or any other third-party software that you prefer. The first standard HiFi case study that I'm going to highlight is for human whole genome sequencing. Here, we used about 10 micrograms of HG002 genomic DNA that was sheared using a 20 kilobase target. Smart Bell Library was prepared using the Smart Bell Express Template Prep Kit 2.0 and size selected on the Sage Elf. Sequencing was performed on the SQL2 system using a 30 hour collection time. Here, when we look at the results, we can see that with only one smart cell ADEM, greater than 27 gigabases of HiFi data, which means CCS data that had a quality score of Q20 or above, was generated. This is about ninefold coverage of the human genome. The mean HiFi read length was, was almost 15 kilobases, and the median quality score was Q32. The second example I would like to talk about is de novo sequencing of the California redwood tree. The redwood genome is huge. In the past, the genome was described as 27 gigabases, but this is the triploid size. There are actually three distinct diploid subgenomes present. Therefore, we can think of it as a nine gigabase hexaploid with a total of 54 gigabases of DNA content. Compare that to the three gigabase diploid human genome, and we are talking nine times the size of the human genome. Overall, it presents a very nice test of HiFi's abilities. For this example, approximately 80 grams of needles were collected, and from that, 56 micrograms of genomic DNA was, was extracted and shared to 15 kilobases. Here, we prepared two HiFi libraries to be sequenced across 31 smart cell ADEMs with a 30-hour collection time. 
For this extremely large genome, HiFi reads were able to exceed the previously published results from other long read sequencing technologies coupled with short reads. Here, we were able to increase the Contig N50 to about 1.9 megabases, and we found that the assembly was approximately doubled in size due to the ability to resolve an autopolyploidy event. Another interesting finding was that in the HiFi data, there were significantly less transcripts that contained frame shift errors. Moving on to the low DNA input workflow, this protocol uses three to 400 nanograms of genomic DNA, and we recommend sharing to 12 to 20 kilobases. SmartBell libraries are prepared following the low DNA input using SmartBell Express Template Prep Kit 2.0. For this protocol, size selection is performed using the Ampere PB beads to remove fragments that are smaller than three kilobases. In terms of data analysis, if you have multiplex two samples, you will use Lima to demultiplex. And then you can use, once again, the improved phase assembler for de novo assembly. In this case study, a single red admiral butterfly with an approximate genome size of 350 megabases was used. Four nanograms of high molecular weight DNA was used for Smart Bell Library preparation, which was then sequenced on the SQL2 system with the 30 hour collection time. What you can see is that a single Smart Cell ADEM was able to generate 13 gigabases of HiFi data, which is approximately 35 fold HiFi coverage of the butterfly genome. A further look at the assembly metrics, and we can see that the Contig N50 is over 10 megabases with a Busco complete score of over 99%. So, this is a really nice example of how low DNA input HiFi sequencing can still give you the complete, contiguous, and accurate genome assemblies that you expect with PAC bio sequencing. This next example is of multiplexed mosquito samples with a genome size of approximately 250 megabases. So, for this study, each mosquito had 230 nanograms of genomic DNA that was used as input into the low input DNA Smart Bell Library construction procedure. These samples were multiplexed and sequenced on the Smart Cell ADEM using a 30 hour collection time. This resulted in greater than six gigabases of hi fi data per sample, which is about 25 fold hi fi coverage of this mosquito genome. Once again, looking at our genome assembly results, you can see that the Contig N50 was about five megabases for one sample and three megabases for the second sample, with each sample having a Busco complete score of 98.8%. Finally, in the next slides, I'd like to go over our amplification based ultra low DNA input workflow. This workflow can be used with input amounts as low as five nanograms of genomic DNA for genomes up to 500 megabases. In this protocol, the genomic DNA is sheared to 10 kilobases, and then there are two complementary PCR reactions. After amplification, the PCR reactions are pooled together, and from there we proceed into the Smart Bell library construction. Smart Bell libraries are then size selected using the Blue Pippin system. For data analysis, there are two additional steps that are performed. The first is trimming adapters, and the second is marking PCR duplicates. From there, you can use Google Deep Variant for small variant detection or PBSV for structural variant detection. For de novo assembly, once again, we recommend the improved phase assembler or third party software of your choice. In this first example for the ultra low DNA input protocol, 10 nanograms of HG002 genomic DNA was shared to 10 kilobases and amplified in the two complementary PCR reactions. 808 nanograms of amplified DNA was then constructed into Smart Bell libraries using the Smart Bell Express Template Prep Kit 2.0 and size selected with an 11 KB mean insert size. 
This sample was then sequenced on two smart cell ADEMs using a 30 hour collection time. As a result, greater than 60 gigabases of HiFi data was generated, which is approximately 20 fold HiFi coverage. A deeper look into the sequencing metrics show that we had a mean HiFi read length of about 11 kilobases and a median quality score of Q33 on cell 1 and Q37 on cell 2 with greater than 99% of the reads containing the adapter and a PCR duplication rate of less than 7%. So overall, very nice HiFi results from very little input DNA. So although we can get very nice results from the ultra low input alone, there is a 500 megabase genome size limit. And some organisms are very small but have large genomes. To tackle this problem, researchers have begun to explore combining the low DNA input protocol with the ultra low DNA input protocol. In the example shown here, high molecular weight DNA was extracted from a single tick. Two ultra low libraries were made with 10 nanograms of sheared DNA each, and each library was sequenced on a smart cell ADEM. In parallel, a low DNA input library was made from one microgram of shared DNA and sequenced across two smart cell ADEM. The resulting data had about 40 fold coverage of the 2.3 gigabase tick genome. As you can see from the histogram on the right, the ultra low input library has a very tight size distribution whereas the low input library had an average read length that was shorter, but there is a long tail where you can get some long low input reads. Looking at the chart on the bottom, we compared the Ixodes species described here to two closely related species sequenced using PacBio long reads. As you can see, with HiFi reads, we require less coverage than when using the long read method and able to give you a complete assembly. Another exciting result is that we are in the greater than one megabase Contig N50 club, which has never been done before in any tick, and this was done using a single tick. Therefore, if your genome is too large to get enough HiFi coverage using the low input protocol, consider combining it with an ultra low input library. And where the ultra low input library will have some coverage dropouts in regions of high AC, AT or high GC content, the low input data can be used to fill those gaps. If you have any questions or would like some guidance on how to get started with your own project, you can always reach out to your local field application scientists, or you can visit pacb.com slash scientists to connect with us. Also on PACB.com, you can explore all of our ap applications, explore all of our protocols and publications, and find example data sets to work with. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today to go over our workflows for whole genome sequencing.